assessment of that game? Um, I thought defensively overall, like, we played a really hard game. Um, guys were flying around. Guys were making big hits, big plays. Um, the morale of the team overall, the whole game was up. Like there, like Efton said, there wasn't a point where you know we thought we were going to lose. Like the whole time, we thought we were going to win that game. We thought we were in it to win that game. Um, it wasn't uh, the outcome that we wanted, but you know I liked how we we battled and how we stayed together as a team throughout the whole thing. And you know, I heard you mention that you think you're a little bit further along right now than you were last year. What are some mm -hmm. of the things you saw that make you think that? Um, definitely how we're running to the ball, just like as a defense as a whole, how we uh, pursue. And then you can just tell like our effort overall. Um, it's a little bit different than last year. Just guys are knowing what they're doing more often. Um, last year that got us into trouble at times. We didn't really know what we were doing most a, a lot of the time, which is why you saw a lot of those scores get put up. Um, but just overall, defensively and offensively, I think mindset's a lot different this year. Um, no matter what, we don't we don't think we're going to lose anymore, and that that's based on you know the, the work we put in the off season, just how hard we pushed ourselves. And I know you guys over fall camp have kind of put an emphasis on stopping the run. Yeah. Obviously, the big number, the three thirty seven yeah. from week one, but it seemed like you guys were really able to yeah. create stops and stop the run yeah. at times when you needed to. What, what, why was there such a juxtaposition between that big number and mm -hmm. then you guys obviously played well yeah. in some stretches? Uh, you know, NDSU, they're, they're an inside uh, running team. They want to run the ball downhill inside. And uh, we knew coming into that game, we had to stop that inside run. And I thought we did a pretty good job at stuffing that inside run, which caused them to do more of the, the play action rollout stuff, which you don't see a whole lot from them. But it's a good change up on their part because it's something totally different than what they're used to on offense and then started running the ball um, outside a little bit more. But I thought we had success, especially on the inside, just stopping that A gap power that they love. You know, that's a staple of their offense. So shutting that down was nice to see, but we just got to be able to execute more when they drop back pass. Uh, have to have better eyes and just got to cut down the critical errors overall. And a lot of new guys on this Fresno State offense yeah. from last year, but obviously they went down to Purdue and, yeah. and had a great game. What are you seeing from them offensively? Um, I mean, they're they're really dynamic on the edge. Their receivers are good. Uh, they were gonna, they they want to spread you out five wide, and then they also bring in tight end at times. You know, split zone, outside zone, kind of like their staple plays that they like to run. But overall, their offense full of good athletes and full of guys that can make plays when the ball's in their hands. Does it give you? I, I know it's a little bit hard when you just have the one game to, to go off of, but that that quarterback, yeah. uh, at least for Fresno State, he's a transfer and he threw four touchdown passes yep. in his debut against Purdue. Yep. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what what you've seen on tape and how you guys are going to be able to try and get some pressure on him? Yeah, uh, he definitely he works the pocket well and he gets the ball out fast. Um, in that Purdue game, I've uh, I've seen multiple times. You know, he knows when it's five wide that they're probably going to get home. If they're bringing five or six, they're going to get there pretty fast. So he knows what his read is, and he knows where he wants to get the ball to, especially when they're going that spread offense. So I think he's really efficient with his reads, and uh, he knows how to read defense as well. And you were just kind of saying it. Like, you guys never felt outmatched in that game yep. last. Does that give you any confidence or uh, a building point to, to go into, into this week? Uh, absolutely. You know, every week um, I'm confident in what our defense can do, and we're – Every week is gonna. We're building more and more. Like we're not there yet, but we're going to get there as a defense. And I'm excited for um, when that comes. And that belief just it stems from the off season. Like I said, you know, we all believe in our team. We believe in what we have. We believe in the playmakers we have. So we just gotta. Every week we just have to keep going back to practice, fixing the things that we messed up, and just continuing to prove. If you kind of go possession by possession, that North Dakota State game. Yeah. That score line is a lot worse than it should have been, probably. Mm -hmm. Was there any kind of fatigue that happened late in the game defensively, or why do you think that they kind of were able to run it up a little bit? Um, the fatigue, I don't think, really played too much of a part. You know, they're a slow, uh, they're a huddle offense, so they're not running a lot of tempo, so it gives you a lot of time in between plays. You know, they, they run, I don't know, 60 plays a game, maybe 70, which um, compared to our offense is not a lot. I mean, we go against. Uh, up tempo every day in practice, so I don't think that plays much of a factor. Um, towards the end of the game, I think just a few more mistakes were made. You know, our eyes started wandering a little bit. Guys were kind of just looking to make a play instead of just doing their job. But I think once we hone back into just team defense and flying around together as eleven, we'll we'll be good. Awesome. Thank you guys. Appreciate it.